Good morning, thank you for attending this quick little demonstration on how to divide uh, dormant perennials. Uh, this is stuff I'll typically do this time of year and just even a little bit prior to where we're at right now time-wise um, and I'll go through some of the benefits of doing uh, these divisions at this time of year and the techniques that I use. So once again, I'm Aaron Selby. I'm the production supervisor here. Um, we do a lot of divisions this time of year, just trying to get things ready, bulked up, that sort of stuff. Um, typically, we're going to do winter divisions because there's no stress on the plant. As you can see, there's very little foliage and the foliage that may be breaking is really, really small. So you typically don't have any stress uh, that you have to worry about watering and uh, keeping the foliage all nice and perky. If you do have foliage, I usually recommend just uh, reducing it. A little saying where you typically wanna have a uh, top and bottom that is symmetrical in size. Um, I would like to have more roots than tops typically. Uh, the, the chances of the plant recovering are a little bit better. So just think of your plant as like an hourglass and just try and keep them pretty much uniform top to bottom. And once again, if you're gonna err on more of one or the other, err on more roots than tops. So it's just a, a little bit uh, easier to take care of. Um, all right, so let's get going. The benefits, once again, no foliage that I have to really worry about. Uh, there's no or little transplant shock. And the other thing there is we can clean the plant up a lot easier. Some of the things you'll need, nice sharp tools uh, to dig up a, a garden specimen. Typically put a nice edge on this. And we will also sterilize our tools just to make sure that there isn't any pathogen or anything else on them. I do this for everything, for my pruners, my shovels, all that sort of stuff just needs to be burning down. Um, if you have pruners, I use a Bic lighter in the garden. Um, this is just what we use in the potting shed here. So for the garden, I will typically use a Bic lighter and just come through and sterilize all of my pruners. That's the truest way to, to sterilize. You will burn off every living organism that's on there. All right, so we're gonna talk about a few different things and how I would approach them. Um, we typically wanna dig up the whole entire plant that we're going to be dividing. And I also like to have a really, really high pressured hose nearby so I can rinse off as much of the crown and root system as possible so I can get a good visual of what the eyes look like. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend that I just dug these up. This is a native grass, this is a Panicum virgatum. This would be a great time of year to be doing uh, the divisions on an ornamental grass. You would be typically cutting them back right now. And then we will be getting into divisions. So just gonna knock that free. And a lot of times I like to use my pruners, I lock them down and use this as a bare rooting device. And that can just get us into that crown. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to keep all these eyes intact. So I'm always attacking the plant from the underside of the crown. A lot of times you'll see people dividing this from the top. You can do that, but what you're doing is basically uh, potentially damaging eyes uh, that are dormant. What we're going to do is look through the crown for natural fractures or some sort of cleavage that looks like it wants to just peel apart. And if you have a large garden specimen, we may need to use some prying tools like these bamboo spades. And what we're going to do is simply come up underneath the crown like this and divide from the bottom. Once again, the reason I do that is so I don't damage any of these good eyes that are up on the top of the plant. So we'll, we'll take this down a little bit smaller and I'm just gonna come in from the underside like that and simply pull these apart. Now you can get really crazy with your divisions and break them down, but basically what you're looking for is that you have good viable eyes to plant back in to make a nice big garden specimen. And here now we have two really nice clumps. We can keep this together 
or if you're feeling extra greedy, sometimes you can take these down a little bit smaller and continue to divide down. Um, we'll set that aside. All right, so that would be a panicum or how to do a ornamental grass. And we're going to plant these right back to the same depth that they were uh, either in a container or in the garden uh, with. Um, another plant we're going to do is something that you may buy bare rooted from the store in fall uh, or, or early spring. These are Leatris. And Leatris have a really, really, really solid um, rhizome system. As you can see, they're just big and chunky. And we're once again going to get this before they break dormancy so these stems don't flop and everything. When we're gonna come back in from the underside of this rhizome. We're gonna cut there and once again, peel the bottom. Sometimes you may have a little bit of rot issues. Um, and what I recommend with that is just going in the house and getting some cinnamon and sprinkling cinnamon on it. Do a nice light coating, let something like this kind of dry down for a few hours and then replant it. Um, that's only if there's rot. On these, we can continue to cut these rhizomes down and corms down, uh, whatever you're playing with that are nice big crowns. And you can take these down and just simply start plopping pieces off. And you can see there are multiple eyes up in here. So maybe we'll do one more. And I always like to say, we like to get quality, not quantity. So keep them in nice big clumps, something like that. Really big eyes. And you can see how you can go from one little tiny crown to a potentially nice little mass of plantings. I would take a, a plant like this probably out of my garden every three to five years, dig them up and divide them out. Getting back to the ornamental grasses, you can watch your garden specimens kind of die out in the center. Once you get kind of that donut thing going, it may be best to dig the whole clump up, reset, give some away, do whatever you want with the remaining bits. But what we're going to do here, as you can see, is divide this down pretty good. And now I went from one plant basically down to six nice crowns. We can now plant those out and go from a stock area about this big to one probably about this big, just in a matter of a few seconds. Do this where your, your ground isn't frozen. I know a lot of our viewers are in the north and we'll have to wait a little bit longer than we do here in zone 7B. Um, but for the most part, let these dry down for a, a few hours. Once again, you can sprinkle a little cinnamon on there. That'll help keep them from rotting. And then we'll just go ahead and pla uh, plant those back out into the garden. All right. The next ones we're gonna get into are echinaceas. Echinaceas I typically will be digging up in my garden uh, through the winter time when they're dormant. I do this about every three years with my echinaceas here. Um, we're basically just gonna bare root them, break them down really, really good. And I'm going to, once again, kind of look for either old flowering stems that I can divide down where the old flower stalk was, or look for nice areas where they wanna naturally fracture. So here, I'm gonna cut on this backside. Up underneath, as you can see, now I have all these eyes still intact and there's no damage on the plant whenever I cut down low. Whereas if you drive, I see so many people driving through the top and it just takes out so much of your uh, potential growth and stuff um, and potentially opens it up for more wounds. Now that I have that old flower stem exposed like that, I'm gonna finish doing most of my divisions on that because it doesn't have any damage to it. Uh, no eyes that can be damaged. So now I break those down and now you can see I've got really two, probably get another one out of these. And what I'm looking for once again is just where this is going to divide the best so I don't really uh, mess up this nice crown of, of eyes. And sometimes I might just walk away 
and say that, you know, I'll get it on another day when it, it looks a little bit easier. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sacrifice this little bit so I get a good clean butt to cut. And I'm going to drive down right through that on the underside. And there we go. And now I have four nice crowns with lots of good eyes on there. These would be perfectly suitable to plant in the garden right now. And then the next probably like four to six weeks, you'll start seeing your, your growth happen. I like to get these usually around like December to January in my garden. Um, about eight weeks out from them breaking dormancy, it gives them a good recovery time. Well, that's echinacea divisions. I'll do that. Set that one back. Okay. Um, the next one we're going to get into is a clematis. This is one of our native uh, clematises, this clematis warii. This is one from Mount Cuba Center. Um, clematis can be a little bit intimidating to, to divide. It's not something that typically people dig up and move around, but sometimes they get so massive you have no other choice. So I like to do them while they're dormant. I'm going to knock that out. And once you see all the dormant eyes there, you've got a ton of potential to play with. So these are some pretty uh, nice seedlings that are a couple years old. And what I'm gonna do is just really get rough with these roots and kind of loosen them up. And have some patience whenever you're dividing. Um, sometimes they'll just naturally break off like this. This is beautiful. So now I've got that clump there. And what I'm going to do here is expose this a little bit more. In the potting shed, we will keep a bucket of water for every person right there so we can rinse the roots off and really take a good eye at the crown so we can really see what's going on there. These. All right, tear it up. Good. All right, so now that I've had a wound on that back side where these were attached, I'm going to kind of go back to that side and see if there's anything else that I can kind of open up from this side. Looks like most of my growth is out here, so it's a little bit more uh, of a, a tricky to get in there and get good cuts. So I'm going to open this up a little bit more. And we're going to simply go in through the back side here. What I'm looking for are these old stems up in here. And you can kind of see some of this stuff here. Um, I want to see if there's any part of that that I can break off on the back side. And there is right here where there was an old stem, just like that echinacea. I'm going to come up underneath the crown. You can kind of see how low I am on that position there. And then we just simply twist that with a little click. Pop that off. And just gently wiggle it apart. These eyes a lot of times are intertwined and the eyes can also be kind of overlapping. So I just gently pull this out so I don't ruin any of these eyes. You can see this eye is wrapped underneath that big root. And there's another nice little clump. So this one I'm actually going to take down even more. I've got probably a set of like 10 eyes on here. So I'm going to come in just on the underside where there's that really good hard wood on the crown. Split. And there's a nice little clump. And there's a nice little clump. And you can go crazy. So you can see the benefits of dividing in your garden. You really take one clump and you can really not make a nice mass. This is by far the fastest way to build numbers in a garden. Um, certainly you can get more out of cuttings and stuff like that, but a lot of these plants you can't take cuttings on. You know, the grass you can't take cuttings on. The clematis you can, but it's very difficult and slow to root. Um, so in this case, Instead of growing this by seed and having all these little seedlings you got to grow off and verify and make sure they're the right thing. Now we can actually clone this by division. You have a really, really, really nice fast recovery. Plants that are actually going to keep growing. There's some nice clumps there. This one I'm probably going to keep together. 
Only has about three or four really nice eyes that are right on top of another. So once again, you kind of see from one little four inch pot, I just got uh, these into five nice plants. Um, get a lot of bang for your buck this way, for sure. Um, and these will continue to grow right as you get them in the ground. So I'm gonna plant those out, stick those back in the pot temporarily. All right. Let's see, the last plant that we're going to do that's really quite similar to the remainders was this Vernonia lettermanii. This is a plant that we typically can root from cuttings, but if you had a nice garden specimen, you may as well dig it up and, and divide it every now and then. Um, it's a little bit easier. And once again, we're just gonna get up in this, and I'm looking for last year's uh, flower spikes. And what I see is right here and right here are where those are at, right here and right there. And those are gonna be the, my points that I'm gonna make my divisions. So I don't know if you guys can see right in here, there's a uh, old flower spike that was cut back and right here. And wherever I have those, so I like to make my divisions right through those. So what we're going to do is pick the best spot. Oops, I accidentally broke that bud there. Um, that would actually probably help me out here. Um, I'm going to go right down through the middle of that flower spike to make my division. If you're gonna make a top division, that's the one I, I like to do. Um, and I'm not gonna go all the way through. Just gonna get it enough to where I can twist the pruners and they will pop off. Oh, there's a the crack. Oh yeah. This is a really, really woody base on this plant. So I might have to get at it from a couple different directions here. All right, there we go. That should be it. And gently break that piece off. And you can see where I'm making these precise cuttings in here on that old stem where the old wood uh, of the flower spike was. All right. The key is just keeping the integrity of the, these eyes in shape. So you got two really nice eyes on that piece. I can probably come up on this back side here and I'm gonna cut right through here on that old piece of wood as well. I'm going to go really low. Crack that. There's another piece that has nice two eyes. You can see where we're at playing with that back side. If you guys want to pass these around and kind of get a better look at them. And then on this guy here, I'm going to do one more division. All right. And. This guy, I'm gonna use this old flower stem section right through here. And maybe I got it. Soon find out. Oops. Hmm. Actually, I'm not going to. Now that I've exposed that, I really see that this is just a couple of really nice eyes and I don't really wanna get in there and mess that up. So I'll leave those as is. So I took one pot and we now have three nice little clumps so we can divide all in those. All right. The last thing we're going to do are hosta divisions. I love to get my hostas divided during the winter time before they break dormancy. Um, Typically you can do most of your hosta divisions during the summertime when there is foliage. They really recover really fast. I was always surprised to see such a soft foliage plant kind of hold up during the summer heat. Basically we're going to do the same thing where we just come in underneath here and bare root it to about this uh, degree. And we're going to be looking at all of these eyes through here and seeing how many we want to do. Now, typically, you can break things down to one eye, but with a hosta, I would typically keep them in a pretty good clump. And I would normally give this a really good rinsing with a hose so I could see what's going on. Um, 
the technique, once again, I will, I can't tell you enough, come in from the underside of the plant. So I keep all of those eyes intact. And then what we're gonna basically do is just start prying. And when you do that, all the eyes, as you can see, are perfect. You don't have any damage that way. Very, very little. You might clip one here or there, but for the most part, all of these eyes are in perfect shape now. Whereas if you come in with a spade through the top, you are most certainly going to clip uh, a good portion of the, the good growth going there. I'm gonna come in here and do one more. And I'd like to see more people do that. You'll have way better success with your garden divisions. But these are solid hostas. I mean, these have got five to six eyes around that whole thing. I could technically break these things down if I wanted to get uh, really aggressive. But once again, it's all about the quality, not how much I get out of them. So they can just keep going and going and going. You can kind of see if you guys want to pass those around. They just keep peeling. And you can literally take one pot that you buy at a, a nursery or, you know, a big clump of plants that you may have in the garden and turn them into a ton of stuff. Um, you can do this for plants that are dormant during the summertime that are getting ready to go into winter growth. So a lot of our bulbs and stuff like that that may be winter growers, like not the scordums and if yawn and stuff like that, uh, we would typically be doing this in say August or September, just prior to those coming uh, out of dormancy. So when you have all that, um, typically what I'll use is KLN rooting concentrate. This is a water-based uh, rooting hormone. It's uh, really easy to use. It's basically a tablespoon per gallon. After I do my transplants, I'll come back through a couple times a month and just give them a little bit of that uh, as a watering in. So I do it initially right as I water in, and then I'll come back through and supplement for another couple months uh, just to get the roots to get stimulated, start growing and bulking up. So, all right, that's a quick little demonstration on dividing dormant perennials. Uh, thank you guys for all attending. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer any of your questions. Anything? Hit it. Breaking dormancy, does that vary between plants? I noticed like you had some growth on that one. Well, what happens is uh, we get really warm months in, in the greenhouses. And this is all new growth just happening uh, over the last week or so since it went warm in the greenhouses. But typically I would get these things in the garden, uh, you know, right now while they're still dormant. Yeah, so like the Vernonia here has absolutely no growth in the garden. I was just looking at it. All the Leatrice are just still dormant. I have a little bit of basil growth on some of the, the switch grasses out there, but all the other stuff should be completely dormant, including the hostas. Um, but yeah, th it varies and you can actually divide uh, as they're just breaking like this, I would like to get them a little bit earlier, but for the most part, that is, that's gonna have very minimal uh, effects on the plant there. So, yeah, good question. Yeah, what you got? Hellebore. Oh yeah, by all means, do them. You can do, yeah, so what I would like to do with like hellebore, since we're in the active growing season, is I would get them usually around November, December, right as they're going into active uh, growth. They should have active root growth by that time. Usually they start that around August, September, gearing up for a new reflush through fall. So yeah, you can certainly get in there. Um, it's a little bit more difficult. They can have really aggressive crowns and that are kind of hardened off and woody. But if you have a lot of stems there that are uh, in a crown, you should dig them up once in a while, especially if they're clonal. Uh, you know, and you want to give that particular clone away to somebody or spread the love a little bit because with the seeds, unless they're some of the older seed strains or the newer seed strains, uh, you'll have variability through all the seed, as you know. So, yeah, good question. Yep, yep. What about elephant ears? I have, I think 
Same thing, yeah. So I would do those primarily in about another like four weeks or so, right as they're breaking dormancy. You can also dig them up right now, but you'd have to store them a little bit through the cold season. Uh, I like to get them right before they're going active. Uh, I would say probably like the beginning of April to the middle of April is like a good time to get in on those. Yep. Yeah, that's a good thing. Uh, things that I would be dividing through the cool season right now that are also active and not dormant, all of our Carex uh, natives uh, and, and the Asian varieties and European varieties as well. Um, I would also be doing peony divisions. Peony divisions can be a little bit more difficult but need to be done about every three to five years, uh, especially the herbaceous perennial uh, peonies intersectionals and the tree peonies a little bit different tree peonies you can pretty much just do uh, I let them kind of do their thing but intersectionals I would dig up every five years and divide those I might need to use a little bit more aggressive tools um, I've used like sawzalls and, and uh, really good uh, landscape knives and, and hand saws that sort of stuff uh, the professionals all field grow them, and then they just rip them in band saws. So it's really quite fast. Um, another thing that people don't know, love to grow here, are all the Muhlenbergia sericeus, which used to be Muhlenbergia capillaris. Any of those southeastern uh, varieties of Muhlenbergia, we find we only want to divide and transplant through the cool season. So start in November and then have it done and established usually by like March. If you buy it in a container and plant it, you're fine. But if you're digging up your garden plant and dividing it, you do it through the cool season right now. So yeah, that's very good. Um, Maybe a yeah. silly question. You, if you're putting it in the ground or back in a pot, uh -huh. pot not I would have to say yeah I would have to say you're gonna water the containers a little bit different than the ground um, especially if you're in like a, a, a greenhouse or something along those lines they're going to want to grow a little bit faster um, so and and after a transplant uh, then say uh, outdoor planting does because it's a little bit colder I don't I don't have a preference in my garden I, I just dig and plant you know yeah and just I go in with a plan I know I'm going to be expanding this or sometimes it's just I need to take the stuff back down and and I'll give away the rest type of thing or whatever um, but there isn't really a preference as long as you plant them back properly label them properly feed them properly and water them properly you're good to go and I think that that's the case with the garden the garden you have outside rain and um, one thing I'll say with uh, perennial divisions is I also watch the weather a lot so if I know that I'm going into a nice cool down period I might get a little bit more aggressive with my divisions that have foliage um, if I know I'm going to be getting some good rain I might divide say the week going into the rain so I can get a little bit of a, a reprieve. The other thing that I would have to say is I would like to do these divisions if they do break dormancy and have foliage during the cooler part of the day so I might actually divide later in the day so they have more recovery time through the night to rebound that sort of stuff versus doing the divisions first thing in the morning and then trying to get them through a hot sunny day even if it's a cool sunny day they're going to show a lot of stress and just try and watch the weather I would have to say a little bit more uh, than you normally would so yeah good questions any others yeah. 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 You can. Well, the thing about growing agaves in containers is you can actually confine the size and keep them fairly small. I mean, a four-inch pot is probably going to grow an agave maximum to about this size. But as soon as you bump that up to say this size, it goes to that size and it becomes a slippery slope. So I uh, typically will keep a lot of my agaves, especially the more tender ones that I have to carry back and forth 
in a smaller container just so they're more manageable and not so heavy to move around. But dividing them, uh, yeah, just keep ripping the babies off and you really don't need too much. Uh, you can literally just set them in a pot and they'll start to root. I will say you'll want to sometimes peel off some of the lower leaves and expose some of the adventitious roots that haven't broke if they haven't rooted. So some of those runners just want to keep running until they hit some ground. Yeah, yeah, some of the varieties will do that. So, but yeah, yeah, you don't really need roots. You can just kind of stick them in the ground. And they'll start to root as long as you don't overwater. So, yeah. Good question. Yep. Anything else? Vining perennial with anything? No. Yeah. Yeah. They are. So they're a rhizome division. You would probably approach it more like the uh, Leatrice right here. Um, and you're also going to see where they stack rhizomes from year to year as they grow this way. They also grow on top of one another with the newer stuff on top and towards the outsides. So you can take a lot of those bottom pieces off that are dormant a lot of times, break them off and replant them on the side. And a lot of times with like rhizome divisions, there'll be a lot of dormant eyes. They won't actually break dormancy until you actually separate them and put them on their own root system. So it might take a year or so, but you may get some secondary reflushing out of those back rhizomes that you broke off. I do this a lot with like blotilla divisions and that sort of stuff. So yeah, good, good questions. Yeah, that's nice. You can do that. And I would probably do those um, why they are actually a little more active or right before they're about to break dormancy here. We get a lot of our calanthes in uh, during the cool season while they're just a little bit of foliage. And the other thing there is you don't want to remove all the foliage on those orchids. Leave some nice leaves as well. You can reduce the foliage, but you just want to leave some of that foliage so they have enough power to break through the dormancy. Fine with calanthes, that's really important. So, yep. Good question. Yep. All right. Anything else we got? All right. Well, thank you once again. Appreciate you giving me a little bit of your time to talk about how to divide dormant perennials and that sort of stuff. And have a good one. Till next time, happy planting. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah.